Hi Rapunzel ladies, it's Lissa here to share with you the French braid wrap that I've been doing for at least weeks. I've been doing it with pashminas, with shiny licious, with shimmeries, with two-in-ones, with every scarf I can get my hands on to figure out what styles will work, what styles will not work. Hint, none of them don't work. You can do it with all of them. And to figure out the little tips and tricks that I use to make this go more smoothly for myself. And I am finally ready to share all of that with you. So today we're going to use a teal pashmina that I picked up in Israel years ago. Not that many years ago, but at least six? Six years, I think? A bronze shiny licious, which is my favorite scarf probably ever, and a little brown lace. This is a sash I picked up on the internet, which is about two inches wide and about a yard long. So this is going to be the third scarf in this three scarf wrap to make it not as bulky, not as heavy. I can't do this with two pashminas, but I feel like somebody else probably could. People who don't mind as much bulk, people who don't have uh, tiny hands like me. I do have a cold, so we're going to try to get through this without a whole lot of sniffling and coughing, since this is my only opportunity to film for a while. Okay, so we'll get this uh, teal scarf, my pashmina, folded to the right size for my head. But before I get started, I'm going to just give a little uh, hint. So, two scarves in this wrap, the pashmina and the shiny licious. One scarf is going to end up as the tail, and the other scarf is going to end up as the poof in the back, and then they're going to crisscross over in the front. I want the pashmina to be my tail, so I'm going to start with that one, and then the shiny licious is going to be my poof in the back. So we're going to start out by figuring out which side I want my tail on, and I'm apparently going to put my tail on this side today. I usually put it on the other side. And then I'm going to measure on my head. Make sure that this hits the nape of my neck, and then my trick for tail ends is that the short end should hit at about my elbow. It's still too short. And not quite. All of this experimenting I do now keeps me from having to do too much experimenting later. All right. So the short end hits at about my elbow. And the long end, if I put my arm straight down, I can grab the ends. So the long end is about hand length and the short end is about elbow length. Now, I also want to make sure that I'm putting this um, angle in the front so that I can start doing my crisscross immediately. So the covered end is going to be the long end and the side where I have my shaper showing a little bit is going to be my shorter end. And I'm going to just adjust this over to one side a little bit. And then, as always, you guys know I really hate doing knots in my scarves, but because this is a multi-scarf wrap, I'm just going to have to deal with it. So I'm going to tie a knot at the nape of my neck, like so. A little shorter. That should be alright. Just gonna adjust my ends a bit. And there we go. So now we're gonna do the second scarf. This is the bronze shiny licious. Such a good investment. I wear this all the time. And this one we're gonna tie with tails evenly. So this one's going to go at an angle in the other direction. Let's see, those are about even. All right, and then I'm going to tie them under the teal scarf. I have gotten away with crisscrossing this one as well rather than tying it. But I'd rather just put a, a little knot in it to secure. Alright, so now we've got short end, long end, even ends. 
and then we've got the start of our crisscrossing here. Okay, so now we've done one, we've done two, so now it's time to bring in three, my little sash. So I'm just going to lay that over wherever it is it's supposed to be. And this is stretch lace, so I can stretch it underneath and tie it in the back. So I have not done this with a proper sash because I don't have any proper sashes. I meant to try it with a two-in-one uh, as a sash, but I haven't gotten around to that one quite yet. I'd be curious if somebody who doesn't mind a lot of volume would be okay having a two-in-one as well as these guys, but I'm going to guess that it's probably too thick, but you're going to want to go for something that's, that's pretty thin, whether that's this two-inch lace or something that's only about that wide, um, for that to be okay. Okay, so one two, and then the lace is three. So now we're going to start on this side again, because we're going one, two, three, four is going to be on the left side, um, which is, I guess, your right side? I don't even know. All right, and it's going to be the first scarf again, because we've already used all of them. So we've got this long end now. So now we're going to use this to make both the cross at the top and to make the tail. So I'm going to un crinkle and then fold in my ends, make a nice smooth tail here. I'm going to bring it up over and cover this end of the brown lace, because I only need it to show on this side. Now I'm going to try to line them up, so here's a trick I figured out. I need everything that crosses over on my left side to be sort of in a line and everything that crosses over on my right side will also be in sort of a line, and that will keep my crisscross points from being all weird. So I figure out where I want them, and then I'm just going to put my finger on the first one and put my finger on the second one and see if those line up the way I want them to. If not, I'm going to move it over, put my fingers on them, and see if they line up now, and they do. So I'm just going to go ahead and go around with this. And then I'm going to tuck it through itself as it comes around this side, kind of like I were doing sheer tails. And now I figure out I did it wrong. So, I have to make sure I go under this shiny licious, not over it. So we're going to try again. So I bring it up to cover the brown. Whew! Behave! Covering the brown, lining up my cross points, that looks right. Sweep behind. I'm going to work my fingers through that spot for the pashmina, it crosses over. Work on my little tails. Now the size of this tail is going to vary depending on what other scarf, what scarf you've used. So when I did it with a shimmery, my tail was longer and fluffier because it had all those tassels in it. This pashmina is kind of a shorter one, so it's got a very short tail. Um, my Rapunzel pashminas are a little longer, so their tails are a little bigger. So it just depends on what scarf you use, and you'll just have to experiment and find scarves that work for you. So now I've got my teal, then my bronze, then my brown, then my teal, and now we're going to do bronze, and we're going to do it on this side. So, take the bronze, fold those in, and we need to cover most of this teal without covering the brown lace. So we're going to bring it up here and follow right over that line. Alright, now we're going to do the same thing where I put my finger over the crossing point and I put my finger over the next crossing point and they're too close together. I'm going to shift it back a little bit, which might mean I have to shift my teal back a little bit. There and there, so now they don't line up. Tug my I should lean it back a little bit so I can line these up properly and have enough space between them. There's the first one, 
there's the second one. They're a little better aligned. Sure. One and two, one and two. Looks good now. So now I'm gonna sweep this around. And tuck it in somewhere. Notice that I didn't tuck it into itself. I just tucked it into wherever I found a spot. It does not matter where it goes, as long as it finds somewhere to be. Okay, apparently my ears are gonna come out of this wrap today. All right, so now we've done teal, bronze, brown, teal, bronze, and brown. So where did my brown tail go? It's hanging out back here. Unfold my lace a little bit and bring it up. So over the bronze. And then we're going to do the same thing. One, two, three. Those are in a nice little line that I've seen about appropriately spaced. And then I'm just going to shove it over here because it's not long enough to go around anymore. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to cover this up in just a minute. So one, two, three spots. And then one, two spots. We're still in a good line here. So now we're going to continue. So teal, bronze, brown, teal, bronze, brown, teal on this side. And that's good because that's where our teal is. And we're going to cover up the brown. There we go. And point, point. And there's the last crossing point. I'm going to adjust that until it falls right where I want it to. Crossing, crossing, it should be right there. And now this definitely isn't long enough to go around. Have no fear. We've got this spot where the shiny luscious crosses over. And we're just going to shove it in there. Don't worry if not all of the fringy ends want to behave themselves. We're going to disguise this point anyway. So now our last one is the bronze. We're going to bring that up so it's on top of the brown. See, we've got the bronze on top of the brown here. So we're going to put bronze on top of brown in the last spot. And just use that tail to make sure you cover all of the little fringy ends that are sticking up there. And then we're going to do this one more time. Point, point, point. Ooh, this is going to have to slip way back. Crossing point. Hmm, no. So I'm going to slide that forward a little bit so that I can hopefully get that last crossing point where I want it. It's a bit fiddly if you want them all perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Crossing point, crossing point, crossing point, crossing point. Perfect. Okay, and then I'm just going to shove that somewhere, anywhere. And there we go. This one turned out a little messy because all of my points are so far away from each other. You can see like a good swath of each one. Oop, got a little tail hanging there. You can see a good bit of each one. If I had put them closer together so that the crosses won't, weren't quite so spaced out, you would be able to see less of each one, but the whole wrap wouldn't be so big, right? So you can see that's quite big. The crosses go f quite far back on my head. So. And if you do it with thinner scarves, you can do it with uh, both two-in-ones and a sash. You can do it with a shiny licious and a two-in-one 
and a sash, and then I'll come out a bit smaller as well. But this is my French braid wrap. It's got a little foofy tail in the color of the first scarf you put down, and the poof in the back and that um, last cross are both in the second color you put down, so it looks like it's sort of melting back into the rest of your hair as it should. And you can do it with pashmina so you can be pretty warm, or you can do it with lighter scarves so you can be pretty cool. And uh, there you go. Show you all the sides one more time, a little slower, so you can sort of see what it's looking like. And I will often put a pin right about here. So I think I have one right here. So I've got this. I'm not even sure which direction it's supposed to go. Um, the pin piece on the back looks odd. I think I would want it to be this way, but the pin piece is vertically. Who knows? This little pin is from my grandmother, and I usually put it on the side opposite my tail. So I've got a little interest there. Try not to stab myself in the finger. Come on. There we go. Ew. Well, it came out and then it went away again. There we go. So I had to fix that somewhere in the middle there. So I've got my tail and my pin. I've got some interest on both sides, one low, one high. Recently I knocked the crosses so you can move them. I moved them all the way to this side so they were over here, out there. And then I put the pin over on this side with my tail. So you can move them around. You can have it leaning. So my crosses are straight back, as you can see. There's a path straight from the middle of my head. But you can also lean them this way. So you, I've done crosses that go like this. I've done crosses that go straight back but are on the side. So like something like that. So they're straight um, in a line. They're not sort of leaning over. But I've done those as well where these would be here and then these would be here and then these would be here and then the last one would be back here somewhere. So they're sort of leaning over to the side. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this to make it more interesting, to make it different, to make it lighter, to make it heavier, to make it warmer, to flatter your face differently. You can like push the crosses like not even anywhere in a line to be kind of crazy with it. So just tons and tons of variations. I've been having a lot of fun with them. I find this to be not super heavy because of these tiny little sashes, but it looks really intricate and it makes me feel very regal. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see other people doing this French braid uh, wrap as well. Thank you for watching!